I do need to give a warning about today's video. In case you didn't notice in the thumbnail, it is the story of an infant going missing. I know the videos where the missing person is a child are harder for some. They're harder for me too. So I just wanted to give a heads up before I began. I do hope you'll continue to watch because this little boy needs to be found. We need more people to know about his case. But if you think it may be too upsetting for you, I do understand. If you do watch, you may have strong opinions at the end, and that's fine. I love seeing everyone's thoughts and theories in the comments, but please be respectful. Family members do sometimes see these videos, and they don't need to see anything hateful. Now that I have that out of the way, let's get on with the story. Hey everyone, thank you for being here for another missing video. Today's case is on Brian Dos Santos Gomez. Brian was born on November the 3rd of 2006 and was being raised by his 23-year-old mother, Maria Dos Santos, and his father, 26-year-old Herandir Gomez Costa. Brian's parents were Brazilian-born, spoke Portuguese, and had come to the United States only around 18 months earlier. Maria had previously worked cleaning houses, but had not worked since having baby Brian, and her and dear worked as a flooring contractor. The little family lived together in the tropical trailer park off the Linher Avenue in Fort Myers, Florida, which was said to be a quiet neighborhood where everyone knew each other and looked out for one another. On Friday, December the 1st of 2006, around 4.50 p.m., Maria was waiting at a bus stop outside of a hospital with her friend Janice Duarte. Maria had baby Brian with her, who was only 28 days old, and Janice had her infant child with her as well. The four were anticipating the bus's arrival to take them home when a heavy-set Hispanic woman pulled up in a black SUV asking for directions to Pine Manor, which was a neighborhood not far away. The woman said she was from out of town and had been driving around for around eight hours trying to get to a family member's home to pick up their baby, and that she was completely lost. Maria had lived in Pine Manor previously, so she knew the way, and she told the woman how to get where she needed to go. About that time, Maria and Janice's bus arrived, so they got on it with their children. When the bus arrived at their stop near the tropical trailer park where they lived, they got off and realized that the woman in the black SUV had followed the bus. She pulled up to the two mothers and again asked for directions. But this time, she wanted them to get into her vehicle and actually show her the way. They told her no, but she started crying, begging, and even offering them money. Maria and Janice could see that the woman had an infant car seat and a diaper bag in the SUV, so they felt bad and believed her when she made the claim she was supposed to be picking up a family member's baby and they did eventually relent and get into her vehicle. They showed her the way to Pine Manor, and then the woman turned around and started driving back to where the woman had gotten into the car, you know, acting like she was taking them home. But instead, she held Maria and Janice at knife point and began demanding money, $500 to be exact, and telling them that one of them had to leave their baby behind. She warned them that if they happened to get pulled over by police, that they all had to act like they knew each other and were willingly traveling together. At some point, the woman let Janice and her baby out of the vehicle, but drove off with Maria and baby Brian. This woman drove around with Maria and Brian in her car for two hours before eventually letting Maria out on the side of the road near a housing development in Estero, Florida, about 16 miles away from where she had originally picked up the women and infants. The woman threatened Maria to wait 10 minutes before calling the police or anyone else and told her, I have killed before, I will kill again. Then she drove off, taking baby Brian with her. Neither baby Brian nor this woman have ever been seen again. This female abductor has been described as Hispanic, between 28 and 30 years old, heavy set, about 5 foot 4 inches tall, with black straight hair that she had partially in a bun. She was wearing blue jeans, a black shirt, and she spoke Spanish but also spoke fluent English as well. 
She is believed to have been driving a two-door 1998-2003 to black Ford Explorer that had the peeling tint on the windows. It was just like really old tint. I don't believe they are positive that it was a Ford Explorer, but they thought it could have been that make and model. Maria did contact police, of course, and she was able to have a friend come pick her up to take her home. I don't know if she waited the 10 minutes to call law enforcement, but I doubt it. I'd like to think she called immediately anyhow. An Amber Alert was issued around 7 p.m. that evening, very shortly after he was reported missing. When police were getting details on the abduction from Brian's parents, they discovered that the couple were illegal immigrants that had been brought to the U.S. by coyotes. Now, in case you don't know what coyotes are, they are human smugglers. Immigrants pay these coyotes to sneak them across the border into the United States, and apparently Maria and Hurander still owed money to these smugglers that had brought them over. So police kind of took this information and ran with it, in my opinion. They assumed that this human smuggling ring had taken Brian from his parents due to non-payment. A lot of the articles still online now have the headline like, smuggling ring eyed in kidnapping case or infant taken as retribution, but Brian's parents didn't owe the coyotes a ton of money. It was only a few hundred dollars, and they didn't think the woman was in any way connected to the smugglers. People in the Brazilian and Spanish communities there say that coyotes do want their money paid in a timely manner, but they aren't known to come take babies away from their parents. If the smuggling ring was in fact involved, no one really wanted to talk. Immigrants that have been snuck over do not want to say anything or name names in fear of these coyotes retaliating. The people who did talk, even some people that were in this human smuggling ring, denied having anything to do with Brian's abduction. Brian's parents even contacted the people that had brought them over to the U.S., and the coyotes assured them that they were not responsible and that they don't take babies in trade for unpaid debts. Also, I want to point out that the abductor told Maria and Janice when they were both in the vehicle that one of them needed to leave their baby. She didn't specifically ask for Brian at first, so if the woman was tied to the coyotes and was targeting Maria, I don't think she would have said, one of you need to leave your child behind. That's one of the things that make me believe that smugglers were not involved. Police asked Brian's parents if the story was made up and if they had in fact sold Brian, which they vehemently denied. Police took Maria's clothing from the day of the kidnapping, as well as Brian's clothes he had been wearing the day before to have for evidence, but they didn't find anything that would indicate Maria had done anything to her son. Both parents fully cooperated with police and just really wanted their son back. Another theory is that the woman who took Brian took him because she wanted a baby. It is believed that this abduction was premeditated due to the fact that this kidnapper had a diaper bag and a car seat already in her SUV. And Another woman, a grandmother who had been walking with her infant grandchild in a stroller, said a woman fitting the description of the female abductor had stopped and asked her for direction that day as well, but the grandmother refused to get into the vehicle and the woman finally drove off. Now, we don't know why Maria got out of the vehicle with her son that day. Maybe this abductor had a knife to her throat. Maybe she threatened to hurt baby Brian if Maria didn't exit the vehicle, which is even more terrifying, and Maria got out hoping her child would be spared. I'm not sure exactly what happened. It is possible that the woman had been watching the two mothers. Maybe she knew or assumed that Maria was an illegal immigrant and figured she could take the baby and Maria might not call police at all for fear of being sent back. Sometimes immigrants think of local police as being the same as ICE, immigration and customs enforcement, and they're scared to ask them for help. And sometimes there's a language barrier, but despite the possibility of being deported, despite the fact that Maria and her and dear knew that police would find out they were here illegally, they still reported their son missing. They told law enforcement everything they could. They cooperated and were present whenever it was requested. I don't believe they hurt their son. 
I don't believe Brian was taken as punishment for owing Coyote's money. My personal opinion is that this woman took Brian for herself or someone else she knew and that someone out there is raising him as their own. I really hope that is the case and that no harm has come to him. Something else I almost forgot to mention, I'm glad I saw it here in my notes, is that the abductor's voice was caught on an answering machine of a local business. She apparently used Maria's phone while they were driving around to make a phone call and have a fake conversation. This voice message was posted on the FBI's website, but has since been taken down, so I don't have it. I have not gotten to listen to it. I cannot find it anywhere. I looked um, until I was almost in tears. If any of you are able to track that down, please, please send me the link. I wish it was still up so I could play it here just in case someone watching this video could recognize the voice. I did find the transcripts, which I'll link below, but it doesn't really give much info. It's just her pretending to talk to someone living at Pine Manor. Brian would be 14 years old now and quite possibly have no idea that he was abducted and that the family he knows is not biologically related to him. He may also look nothing like he did as an infant. If you are a parent, you know how quickly their features change. My children's newborn one month and six month pictures look nothing alike because they grow and change so quickly. Brian has black hair and brown eyes. He was two feet tall and weighed 12 pounds at the time he was taken. There are several age progression photos of Brian. If you have any information on Brian's whereabouts or the identity of the abductor, please contact the Fort Myers Police Department at 1-239-321-7700 or your local FBI. Please share Brian's missing flyer. Please share the sketch of this female kidnapper. And please share this video if you think it will help. There have been people that have been abducted and reported missing as infants who later discovered on their own as adults that they were actually a missing child. I hope Brian is out there being well taken care of and can someday find out the truth and be reunited with his family. Please let me know what you think about this case in the comments. Please be respectful and I want to remind everybody there are other forums and other places and platforms to discuss immigration laws and your opinions on it. This is not that place. This is a place to discuss, you know, a missing child's case. So please just don't bring any hate in the comments. Thank you all so much for being here and listening to Brian's story. As always, I mean no harm in doing these videos. I'm simply trying to get the lesser known cases out there. And if you would like to support me, please consider hitting that subscribe button, giving this video a like, and I would also highly suggest checking out my entire missing playlist as all of the cases I do need more exposure. I post videos like this one every Wednesday, and until next time, bye guys.